I think everything in life as believers is we're believers as, and sons and daughters first. So we're called to do the work of the ministry in life. Um, I think the thing for me is ministry. And I, I look back after we've talked about all these different uh, thoughts over all these years, you know, I'm 40 years old now and I look back over my life and, and I go, man, I, I don't regret any time that I spent working in what I worked in, doing what I did, because all of that was a f it really, I was, I was in ministry there just as much as I am here. Welcome to the Work Week Walk podcast, living out your faith authentically in the everyday workplace with your host, Craig Magrum. Well, welcome to the Work Week Walk podcast. This podcast is all about living our faith in Jesus out in our everyday jobs, understanding that the workplace is our mission field. Uh, my name is Craig Magrum. My everyday job, my nine to five, is a business development specialist for a, uh, I know this sounds very specific, but a real estate media uh, a software business. So we create software for photographers and videographers to help uh, sell real estate or help sell realtors to their clients. And uh, I just, I love that. I did did real estate photography and videography for about four years myself. And now I get to help introduce the software that I use to other photographers to help them grow their business. And just get a lot of joy out of it to to see new business people being able to grow and, and be creative and take care of their families and do something that, that they love doing. So, uh, man, what a privilege to have that kind of work. So that that's a little bit about me. Uh, but what we're going to do in, in this podcast, and I've explained this in past episodes, but if this is your first time watching or listening, every episode of the Work Week Walk, with our, our focus being how do we live out our faith in Jesus in our jobs as ministers? Because yes, you and I are ministers, even if we're not pastors or working in a church, we're called to be ministers of the gospel. So what we're going to do is each episode, we invite somebody different from a different career field, a different industry. And sometimes they represent multiple industries, like in today's case. And we're going to talk to them um, because each guest I know, um, I, I either know personally or they've been referred to me as somebody that passionately loves Jesus and lives him out in their jobs. And so they're going to share with us the challenges of, of living out the Christian life in in the workplace. They're going to share how they do that practical, you know, practical steps that you can take to, to really be a disciple and to, and to share your faith with others in all sorts of different ways. Uh, we're going to talk about the victories that we can see as, as we do that as followers of Jesus and uh, just, just the, really the spirit behind all of this, how Holy Spirit directs us to live all of this out. Um, and to really be the hands and feet of Jesus in our job. So that's that's what we're going to do. I want to invite you to subscribe to the podcast. That way you get notification when a new uh, episode drops. Typically, it's Monday mornings around 5 a.m. So you can listen to it before you're, you, know, you head into work and just really get your work week off on, on a good start. So subscribe. Uh, if, if you get something good out of this, if you can like it, that would be awesome. Share it so that we can encourage others that you know are followers of Jesus and, and help other people understand their identity in Christ. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's what you can do. If you have questions, if you have an industry you would love to see covered, please email me. You can email theworkweekwalk at gmail.com and I've got it right there on the screen for you as well. So with all of that aside, let's dive into this. This is going to be a unique podcast, a, a unique episode, because the gentleman we're talking to has gotten to be a good friend of mine, but has worked in several different uh, types of careers and industries. But the one thing that's main he has maintained consistent consistency in, I'm a, yeah, to think I've actually worked in radio for almost 20 years, could spit that one out. <laughs> um what he has maintained consistency on is living Jesus out in every one of those jobs he's had. He carries Jesus with him. And, and we all do that as, as Christians, but this guy, he, he does it in a, a real authentic way. And I'm just really excited to talk with him and listen to him and learn from him tonight with you. Um, so 
Uh, this, this guy has worked in screen printing and embroidery. Uh, he has worked in the field of, uh, helping to find employment for people with, uh, developmental disabilities and, and special needs. Uh, he's a school bus driver as well. Boy, that's a ministry. <laughs> he, he, he works, walks in the grace and patience of God for that one. I couldn't do that. Uh, but also the pastor, uh, of a church in Deschler, Ohio, Ohio called, uh, the way community church. Did I get that right, Justin. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so let me introduce to you Justin Duell, my friend, brother, confidant, and uh, just all around encourager. Justin, welcome to the Workweek Walk. Hey, thanks for having me tonight, Craig. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So I, like I said, I'm super glad to have you on tonight. Um, you and I had a kind of an interesting way of meeting for the very first time. So let's just kick it off on how that that meeting happened, what what the story was of how we met. Um, and it, that ties directly into one of your career, one of your jobs that you, that you worked. Um, and, and we'll talk about then how you lived the gospel out in that. But tell the story real quick, how, how you and I met. Yeah, so um, it's been a, I, w- I bet it's probably been about two to three years now since we met each other. Maybe, oh, is it longer? It's gone, it's longer than that. It might Wouldn't be longer that? than that, Craig, but yeah. so I worked uh, in a field with adults with disabilities for uh, almost 18 years, wow. and uh, uh, my background in that, I always tell people it's pretty interesting. I was 19 years old when I started in that field. Um, I had just graduated high school. I worked at Meyer for my first job, and then uh, somebody came in and said, hey, would you like to work at Wood Lane? And I said, mm. yeah, that would be great. I would love to do that. And uh, had some family that had some uh, disabilities and uh, just always uh, had a real love for that culture of people. Mm. Uh, and uh, so basically over time, I um, just, I discovered that um, it's gonna, it was, a, it was a journey of learning that I had to walk through. And it was going to take time to walk through that. It was going to take time to um, understand fully what God was asking of me to do during that time. And I, I'm really a firm believer that whatever season you're in, you're, God is at work. Mm-hmm. He's at work doing and he's behind the scenes doing things that you just uh, can't do on you know, you, you, you can't make this stuff up. You know, <laughs> right, he's got a right. plan and all of that. So basically, um, I started out working in the bathrooms. Mm. <laughs> uh, I was assisting adults with disabilities in the restrooms. And I did that for uh, a couple years of my career. Mm. So I always joke around and tell people I had to start my, my walk in ministry from the bottom up. literally. <laughs> and so, uh, it was very humbling. Yeah. Uh, and I remember the second day I came back to work, some staff members asked me, they said, why, why did you come back? Hmm. And I said, because I said, this is what I feel I need to do. This is my job. This is what God's asked me to do. Hmm. And they said, well, the last person we hired to do this job said they were going to lunch and we never saw him again. <laughs> so I said, well, praise God. Uh, we, we're not going to have that uh, rapport. But uh, <laughs> Basically started out working in the restrooms, uh, assisting people. Um, then I, over the years, I just did all sorts of different work and it led us all the way up until the time that I became the, um, employment supervisor for positive community connections, which was a, a subdivision of uh, Woodlane residential services. And that leads me up to meeting you. Hmm. And uh, I remember one day we had a a young gentleman named Paul who we were in a meeting and uh, Paul had a desire to do photography uh, and do video upload and to own his own business. Hmm. And one of the the principles in uh, working with adults with disabilities, which I think is also another principle just in life, is we always had this this principle that it's about people first. Hmm. Uh, the person in front of you is the most valuable asset, the most valuable person you're ever going to come across. So you, we, we approached every situation with this person has, has value, this person has a, a purpose, and they have a destiny in front of them and to mm. value that in their life. And so Paul had come in and he had shared all these things. And there was a few people around the room that were really excited about this opportunity, except for 
his counselor that was supposed to be his biggest fan, his biggest cheerleader in this, mm. really didn't have the feeling or the belief that there was something out there for Paul to be able to do. Right. So I said, hey, what if I work on this and get back with you in a week or two, see if I can just shake some bushes and just see if there's anything out there that would just bring value to his life that he wants. To, this is something he wants to make a career out of. This is something he wants to do. What if we just, you know, explore a little bit mm -hmm. and we did. And I went back to my office that day and I remember sitting down and I began to pray. <laughs> uh, Cause I said, Lord, I don't know where to even begin <laughs> uh, to look for some place that would hire him as a private contractor for video upgrade, uh, upload or for, um, uh, photography. And I just remember thinking, Lord, this is going to have to be you, uh, that leads and directs in this. And I just asked for wisdom in this. Hmm. And I was sitting there and I had this thought just come immediately into my heart. Hey, call one of the realities in town and ask them if they need anyone to take pictures of the homes, uh, that they're hmm. trying to sell. Yep. And I thought, okay, I'll do that. So I call the real estate agent and I set up a meeting and I go over there and they, they were happy to meet with me. And they said, Hey, uh, we already have a guy who does this for us. I said, Oh yeah. What's his name? They said, his, his name's Craig Magrum. <laughs> I said, okay, great. And I went back to the office. I got your phone number. I got all the information from them. And um, apart from Facebook stalking you, I, I basically <laughs> went back to the office and I sat down and I had your number in front of me and I thought, okay, great. This is a great connection. And then it dawned on me, Paul's aunt told me that I needed to connect with somebody that was in the real estate business that lived <laughs> next door to her. So I called her. I said, Kathy, what was the gentleman's name that lives next door to you that I'm supposed to call? She said, his name's Craig Magro. <laughs> I said, you can't make this stuff up. Right. <laughs> this is just too sweet. So I, I remember calling you and you were gracious enough to have breakfast with me. We met. And then after we had breakfast together, we um, just began to dive into this possibility and exploring this opportunity for Paul. And yeah. I would say from there, the rest has been history with <clears throat> building a relationship. Yeah, exactly. And, and yeah, Paul worked with me for, I think it was three out of the four years that I had that business. And what a, what a good guy and just a hard worker, um, shadowed me on a lot of jobs and, you know, taught, I was able to teach him, you know, how to do some real estate photography. He shot a couple of jobs, um, just a, a hard worker. And yeah, I, I was thankful for the opportunity to work with Paul and, um, to help, you know, be a part of him living out, one of his dreams and, and then you being there to support him in that and make that possible. And I, I don't know if it was our first breakfast meeting or in a subsequent conversation, but it became pretty obvious. I could tell you were a follower of Jesus. I mean, mm. it just, it shines out of you, Justin. And that's part of why I wanted to have you on this, on, on this podcast. Um, you just, you walk in it effortlessly. The, the love of God flows through you. And that's what I want to explore is, how, you know, first of all, how do you get to that point of being able to exude that hmm. just in every walk of life that you're in, every job that you've had? Because I could just tell when, when we were sitting and talking. I don't even remember what led to that coming out that, hey, we were both followers of Jesus. And this was definitely a God, a God you know, divine appointed meeting um, to, to benefit Paul and, and to show Paul that, hey, you're loved. You, you are cared about. You have purpose. You have value. Um, so the very fact that you are you're working uh, in this role to to communicate that to other people, I mean, there are people that do that that don't have a relationship with Jesus. But what made it different for you? How how did you get to the point in your walk with Jesus, Justin, that you're able able to walk that out so effortlessly in in the people that you interact with? Yeah, I, I well, I, that's very humbling for you to say that, Craig, because. I felt the same way about you. I remember when I met you, I was just like, man, this guy just loved Jesus. You know, it was just, uh, just without a doubt. I knew that there was a, a kindred spirit there. I knew we were going to just start walking life together. And, um, uh, I just, 
I, I think for me personally, it's been a journey in growing in relationship with Jesus. It's like a, I always compare it. Walking with Jesus is like a marriage. You, <laughs> you are, you spend time with him. Um, you get to know him, but over the time of getting to know him, sometimes even when we start, first start uh, following Jesus, I have a selfish ambition. Mm. I, I, I just, I don't want to go to hell. Yep. Um, I, yep. And there's only one way to be free from hell, and that's following Jesus. So right. sometimes people even come to follow Jesus because of selfish ambition and a selfish motive of, I don't want to go through destruction or issues in my life. And 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 be honest, we use Jesus sometimes as a get out of hell free card, like True. Monopoly. Yeah. And so what I've always wanted to share with people and through my life is, number one, Jesus is my love. Like he is everything. He's not someone I'm trying to incorporate into my life, mm. but I'm walking this out and I'm, I'm pursuing him every day that he would be my life, that he right. would be my source of everything that I do yeah. and everything that I say, everything that all my actions, I want it to be Jesus first more than anything. Right. And and I think for me, it's it's been a it's been a season of growth in that where it takes it takes time, it takes intentionality, but it also people sometimes think it's the rules of do's and don'ts. Hmm. But when you fall in love with Jesus, it's all about doing whatever He has asked, right. and it just it just presents He just presents peace, He presents joy to us. He presents us uh, life. I mean, he is the author of life. Right. So I, I always shared like this. I think the Lord showed me this a long time ago when I was a kid, actually. Uh, I remember the Holy Spirit just speaking to me. He said, if you, and just for example, if you and I, Craig, went into a restaurant and I'm, there was somebody in there that I knew, but they didn't know you, the proper thing to do would be to introduce you to them hmm. and say, this is my friend, Craig Magrum. Now, they don't know you, Craig. They have no idea who you are. But because they know me and they've developed trust with me, mm -hmm. my goal would be for them to accept you the same way they've accepted me. Wow. Yeah. And so the Lord showed me that years ago. He says, if you would be ashamed of bringing, introducing your friend to someone else, are you ashamed to introduce me to others? Mm -hmm. Like, do you want me to be in relationship with you for a backdoor, quiet, behind the scenes relationship where it's just you and me? Or do you want to be behind the scenes with me so you can expose me and reveal me to people that you meet? So two things you, you said, one, one explicitly, one not so much. You said you're not just incorporating Jesus into your life, but he's first and everything. It it reminded me very, very similarly of something Todd White said about it. Yeah, we don't add Jesus to it's Amen. it's all Jesus. It, it, it's Amen. we're not incorporating him. It just he permeates every part of our life. And and that's part of my passion of, of this podcast is it's so easy for us when, you know, we're just totally in God's presence in church on Sunday, maybe Sunday night, maybe Wednesday night. But when we go into and clock into our job or, you know, maybe we're salaried, whatever, mm -hmm. Monday morning comes, we get into this different mindset. It's almost like we've compartmentalized Jesus into the Sunday box or Wednesday night box. But then Monday through Friday, we don't necessarily think about him. But if we're if if we're doing more than just incorporating him into part of our life, but letting him permeate every part of us, and it's not just religion. It's just not just emotion we go through. And there's times that it does feel like we're going through the motion of, mm -hmm. of our faith. And those are dry times. And thankfully, God walks with us through those. But it's, it's more than just a religious observance of going to church on Sunday and saying that we're a Christian. It's an active, living, vibrant walk with him where we're having ongoing conversation. And it's just not just us talking to him all the time. We have to be listening. Um, so thank you for what you just said there, um, about incorporating. And I just blanked out on the other part. It'll come back to me. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I, I think, um, just to share with you a little bit on this too, a scripture that has meant a lot to me that really has changed my life. I feel like this is one of those scriptures that, you know, all scripture is amazing and beautiful, but this is just one of those scriptures that has really just, um, 
challenged me mm-hmm. in my walk with Christ and always, I guess God's always like, he doesn't want to just look at, at the outward of what I'm doing and how I'm performing. He He wants to know the why. Yeah. I'm doing what I'm doing and why I'm performing what I'm performing or doing what I'm doing. And the parable of the unforgiving debtor in Matthew 18 is one of the most powerful parables to me, Hmm. because I think when we talk about living life for Jesus, with Jesus, really what we're saying is as a Christ follower, I want the identity of, I want the attitude and the same character that Jesus has. I'm not called. I hear I hear Christians a lot of times will say, I'm just like David. I'm like, uh oh, did you kill some guy and uh, take his wife? Uh, <laughs> or hey, I'm like Peter or I'm like yeah. this character or that character. And And I think there's things that we can lean into and see in Scripture of these different characters in Scripture uh, that – that live life and we see their their successes, we see their failures, but ultimately we're not supposed to live life like David did. We're supposed to live life like Jesus did. Mm. That is the heart of our faith is to be a Christ follower, to follow him with all of our heart. And this scripture means a lot to me because whenever I think about uh, revealing Jesus or walking with Jesus with other people, I always have to say this. I have to say, okay, Lord, how have you approached me first? And and when I look at how he's approached me, Jesus has never told me once that he would not forgive me. Hmm. He has never told me that I was not valuable. And he's never told me that there was no hope. In fact, it's completely the opposite. Every time I go to Jesus, he wants me to come to him. He desires for me to come to him and he loves me unconditionally. And people say, well, how do you know that? Look at the cross. (laughs) Simple as that. It's the cross of Jesus that reveals his love to us. But when we talk about work, living out our faith in the workplace, many times what happens is we begin to live our Christian walk with this attitude that things around us are for us rather than things are around us in order to glorify God. Mm. And in this parable of this unforgiving debtor, this man, it's time to collect the money. And and the master goes to collect the money, and this man can't pay for it. He can't, there's no way he can pay for Mm -hmm. what he owes the master. So the master says, okay, um, I'm going to do a few different things here and we're going to get this money back. And he and he pleads with the master and he asks him to forgive him for the debt that he's carrying. And Jesus simply says, which the master is a reflection of Jesus, I'm going to forgive you of everything that you owe me. Hmm. And then we see that debtor go out immediately after that. And he has someone under him. Maybe it's an acquaintance. Maybe it's somebody that they've worked together. Right. And he needs mercy and he needs grace, but he chooses the man that has been forgiven from everything he's ever owned hmm. has been for as now holding that over his coworker's head yeah. and saying, nope, you know, you're going to pay me back what you owe me. And I think that has just really changed my life in regards to any place that we're at in our workplaces, in our homes, in our churches, wherever we're at, we have to approach one another with the attitude that Christ approached us with. Right. Right. And, exactly. and any other attitude that we're approaching people with, we need to be really careful and take times of reflection to say, is this revealing? Am I introducing my friend? to them Hmm. by my response. And if I'm not, then there could be an issue in my heart that needs to be dealt with. That's heavy stuff, but man, spot on, spot on. Good word, Justin. Back when, when you first started introducing what, what you were doing with um, uh, your work with Paul and and other individuals, you said you, you, you guys started with the, the premise that everyone I'm serving in this role has value. They have purpose. They, you know, they're, they're unique. 
and it, it sounds kind of vaguely familiar, kind of like in Genesis where man and woman were made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. So starting with that premise in, in that particular field of, of work, of serving people with develop, developmental disabilities, understanding that they are made in the image of God. Amen. That's, that's where you started with. That's how you lived out your faith Amen. In, in serving them. Simple, very simple. And you could take that into any career field. So, so let's transition to, um, to the work that you were doing with a, a company, I believe it was called Three Chord. Mm -hmm. that uh, does silk screening and embroidery and, and that kind of work. So that that's a retail set, setting. Remind me what your role was in, in that job. Okay, so that's a funny story as well. Yeah. So the owners um, are, are friends of ours who um, actually the wife, um, Sister Kathy, she just passed away this last past mm. year here. And, and uh, But her and her husband, Ron, were the owners of this company. And uh, they were just dear friends of ours and to our church. Uh, they helped us plant this church. Um, they were just very actively engaged hmm. with us uh, through the planting of this church. And uh, they owned this business. And I remember while I was working with uh, at, at Woodlane Residential Services, I remember the Lord just sort of, I was very comfortable in what I did there, but I just felt like the Lord was, was leading me out of that field and, uh, I, I didn't know where he was leading me into. I was, mm -hmm. I was doing some assistant pastoring here at the church and uh, I was working full time for Woodlane residential services. And I just felt like the Holy spirit was saying, okay, now's the time things are actually progressing. Things are looking good. And it was as, as if Holy spirit said, now's the time for us to transition you and get you out of this role. And I didn't know what that meant, but I kept on getting this thought of what if I went and started having conversations with Ron and Kathy at three chord to see if there'd be any opportunities to do sales or just to connect with them, help their business grow and just grow myself as a person and sure. what God was calling me to. And I remember calling for, I don't know, a few months. Hey, Ron, Kathy, do you guys have any openings, you know? And no, we'll let you know when something comes up the right, but we want you to come over and work with us. They kept on saying that to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one day Ron says to me, come on over and that's me. So I drive over to Archbold. I come and sit down in his office and he says, my assistant just put her two weeks notice in this morning. Mm. He said, I had no job for you when I asked you to come. Now I have a job for you. Would you be my assistant <laughs> to this business? So I'm, I'm going from something I'm very familiar with. Right. Now I'm stepping to something, brother, I didn't know what end was <laughs> up. I didn't know what I was doing. Right. And, and I remember him saying to me, now you're stepping into here. He said, it's going to be like, the feeling's going to be like drinking out of a fire hydrant. <laughs> And I didn't know what he meant until about, oh, I would say probably a week or two in. I remember driving home thinking, Lord, is this what you want me to do? Because this is pretty, this is pretty intense. It's right. very just difficult, whatnot. But at the same token, in that time, the 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 Lord was was affirming my heart that this is what he asked me to do, even in my uncomfortability. Hmm. And I, I had peace in knowing that this is where God wanted me at, even in unpeaceful situations. Hmm. And because I think we have as believers, we have to lean into, like when we feel a sensing of the Holy Spirit, hear his voice, we have to trust that even if it isn't going our way, that we give that fair season to prove out whether or not that is the voice of the Lord or not. Mm hmm Sometimes that takes time to do that. We have to prove that out. And uh, and I tell people all the time, don't don't give up too quick because about the time you give up, right on the other side of that next moment, God <laughs> wants to do something in you. But if you give up here, you're not going to encounter what he has here for you. And uh, right. so that's sort of, we I began to do that job. And uh, um, things were, again, starting to go well. I was starting to build some sales. Then COVID hits. Oh, geez. Yeah. yeah. And and after COVID hit, I remember Alex, our lead pastor at the time, came to me and says, how would you like to increase your hours at the church? 
And I said, that would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, what are you thinking? He said, well, what would you like to do? I said, well, I'd love to come on full time. He said, well, I'd love you to come on full time too. And so he brought me on full time as the assistant pastor here at the church. Hmm. And so I, I, I talked to Ron and Kathy and I did times of reflection with them after this transition happened. And I remember Ron just looking at me and saying three chord was the step of faith you needed to take to bring you into the place where God wanted you to be. Hmm. It's amazing how the father can use anything, even things that we don't expect to get us to Amen. where ultimately he's, he's bringing us to everything has value that he's doing in our life. So the fact that you were able to trust, trust him in, in a position that you had no experience in, but still we're living him out and and then trusting him for, for provision. Um, yeah, that's, that's a huge, uh, a huge thing that I don't think we've actually talked about in previous episodes is those times where we are in jobs that we don't, we're not necessarily, and I'm not saying this was your case, but things that we're not necessarily super passionate about, mm -hmm. but, but living him out. One of the ways of living him out is walking in trust and patience with him and trying to learn what it is that he's teaching us through that situation. And that might not involve interaction with anybody else. You might not be preaching the gospel to somebody in your role in doing that, but you are living as a disciple, a student of Jesus in the top, in the midst of a, a situation that isn't ideal for you or where you imagined yourself being. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's I think that shows too, whatever job you're at, wherever you're at, God just asks us to be faithful. Right. That's right. all he's asking of us is just to be faithful. And I think sometimes we our thought of faithfulness is is always attached to our comfortability in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And God says, I want you to be faithful even in your uncomfortability. Right. And 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 that's where we really find out where our faith is at, where our trust is at, is in the, it's not in the comfortable times. It's actually in the in uncomfortable yeah. times that that is revealed to our hearts where we're actually at with the Lord and how we're walking our faith out daily in those situations. And just to springboard back, just for a brief moment, thinking about the days at Woodlane with some of the individuals we were serving, I remember thinking to myself, and I was just reflecting on this a little bit earlier today, um, Jesus says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important love your neighbor as yourself. Hmm. And I, it, it made me think about those years where I was serving people, I was helping people with that, that most of society would say, this person has nothing to yeah. offer you. Right. But what I've found is I learned more from people who others would have thought couldn't teach you anything. I've learned more from them than I have in any other area of my life. Hmm. When when you're working with a young man who is paralyzed from the waist down or from the neck down, and all he can do is blink his eyes to tell hmm. you yes or no, you begin to think, I wonder if his back needs scratched. I, need, hmm. I wonder if he's uncomfortable in his chair. I wonder if he just needs his arm to be stretched out. I wonder if where I, you begin to think about the what they need versus yeah. what you need. And I think mm. a lot of times in our workplaces, we're always thinking about what we need. We need the raise. We need the comfortable chair. We need the comfortable situation. We right. need everybody to be on board with what we're doing. And we never pause and think, looking at the people around us and say, you know, what? we're the light of the world. What is it that this person in front of me right now needs? <laughs> Maybe they're going through a stressful situation at home. Maybe their spouse is fighting with them. Maybe very soon you become in tuned with what people are going through and where people are at. And you begin to think, how can I be someone to share Jesus with them versus being someone that only is thinking of themselves and their walk with Jesus? So it's like, yeah. I'm here for Jesus in me, but I'm not here for Jesus in you. <laughs> it it kind of um, leads you to the the idea that we really do need the empowering of the Holy Spirit. We, Amen. We, you can't do that. You can't look at people in that um, 
with those types of eyes of Jesus without his empowering and his gifting for that. And when you start, when, when you start asking yourself that those questions of, you know, what are they dealing with at home or what is the stress at work that they're dealing with or what, you know, what relationship problem do they have right now? The, the new Testament does talk about the, the spiritual gift of the gift of knowledge where God can give you just a, a, a just a, a miraculous word about what's going on in their life. And mm-hmm. do you trust him? To, do you, is, is your ear tuned to him enough to be able to hear that, what he's telling you to be able to speak to that person and be that ambassador for him and that conduit for him? Um, and man, when, when you lay down your will um, and your fear and your insecurities to live out what Jesus is saying, Hey, I, I want to, I want to reach this person right now. And you're, you're the one I'm going to do it through. If we can lay our will down to let his will flow through, man, the, the, the miracle that you get to see in that other person's life, that's where you're going to find purpose. And man, why haven't I been doing this, you know, forever? Right. Amen. Uh, Amen. Yeah. I love that because I think that's isn't it the, the perspective of if you want to if you want to find your life you have to lose it. it yes, yes. It, it, it's it's the it's the principle of it's it's looking at what Jesus did. King of the universe becomes a man in order to rescue us from ourselves right. from sin, and 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 he came with this attitude that we know the gospel and life itself is all about Jesus. But Jesus came with the attitude that it was not about him. Hmm. He always said things like, I only do what my fa- I see my father do. Yeah. And what did he continuously do? He continuously postured his heart in a place of serving to glorify God, hmm. even though he was God. Yeah. And I think sometimes we as Christians, we are, we are, we're giving authority. We're given all of this power from the kingdom, but, what we don't do is we don't surrender ourselves to say all of this, all of these things that God has given us is not about me. Mm. It's all to glorify him. Right. And now in our workplaces, instead of needing something from the people that are working around us, I don't need anything from you. I only want to offer you what's been given so freely to mm. me. That's all, So that's now it, it, your perspective begins to change where it's no longer, I always ask my, that's like where I go to immediately when something is approached or when I'm, when I'm dealing with situations, it's, is this about me or is this about glorifying God? Hmm. And if it's about me, I need to stop and pause and pray until I posture my heart to say, what's going to come out of my mouth next. I want it to glorify God and have nothing about me. Hmm. That's awesome. Justin. <clears throat> it's man, we we could talk about this forever. Um, yes, sir. I, <laughs> and with with having basically four different things that you've been working in, um, I I, I want to keep moving, but man, we we could stay in this for so long. Let, let's. I, I want to transition to two more areas that you've worked in. Um, you you talked about the fact that you were you were asked to join your church on a more full time basis, and I want to save that for last. Sure. Um, and, and there's a purpose in that. So let's talk about the school bus driving. Now that's something <laughs> different. <laughs> so you're driving a bus for public schools, uh, in, in rural, rural, I can't say this rural Ohio. Okay. What does it look like? No, first of all, let me ask this. Is it elementary school kids? Is it junior high or is it high school or multiple? Yes. To, yes. To all of all it. of it. Okay. All right. Primarily okay. high schoolers, but, uh, I drive a vocational school route, so I'm primarily working with high schoolers, but I do have elementary school students um, okay. in the mornings. So as a, as a carrier of the presence of Jesus in, sure. a, in a public school role, driving bus, serving these kids, which God bless you, Justin, because I could not do this without, uh, <clears throat> without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Um, what does it look like to minister to those kids as a as a bus driver? Yeah, I think uh, again, it's the whole principle of this is my friend, and I want you to know him. Hmm. Um, I think one of the reasons I remember why my wife and I we were walking, taking a walk one evening, and she said, "Have you ever thought about bus driving?" And I said, "No." <laughs> 
And it's amazing how Holy Spirit will use your spouse or different situations just to bring things to your attention. So some, uh, I think one of the most important thing is, is be open to hear Holy Spirit through Scripture, mm. but also be willing to hear and listen when, when others who carry His presence are speaking to you right. to receive what He's saying. And so she was walking, and I didn't know what she was saying, but she's like, yeah, I think that would be a great great thing for you to do. And I, I, you know, after we walked around the block a few times and I was just thinking on it and I'm like, yeah, that would be a great idea. And then she said, what if we started a youth group about the same time <laughs> you started bus driving? And I said, that would be amazing. So we, I, I went and I called our superintendent and I said, Hey, uh, do you have any bus driver positions available? And he said, yep. There sure are. Well, the next time I see him, the bus driver director comes and he says, oh, you're our new bus driver. I haven't even <laughs> filled out an application yet, Craig. I'm like, wait a minute. I am? And he says, yeah. So uh, the Lord was just uh, opening these doors for me to do this. And uh, so what we did was is I went through the trainings, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I get my CDL, become a bus driver. And we launched our youth group two weeks after I started driving bus hmm. and I remember uh, the kids, the students getting on the bus. And I always just think, you know, I don't, the, Romans says, don't just act like you love people, but actually love them. Hmm. Yeah. So I want those students, when they get on that bus, I want them to know they're loved and valued just by my, how I am excited to see them. Yeah. Wow. Even if I don't feel well, even if I'm tired, even if I've had a long night, whatever that looks like, I want them to know that when they're in front of me, there's a God that loves them. Hmm. So I don't want to just pretend to, I don't want to just go through the motions, but I genuinely want to love them well. Right. And so they come, they come onto the bus and I just say, good morning. How are you? You know, talking to them. And, uh, uh, some of my high schoolers started to come up and have conversations with me. Really? They would go from the back of the bus. I'd come to a stop and they'd come up and they'd sit behind me. Hey, I'm struggling right now with uh, my sexuality. I don't know mm. if I'm gay. I don't know if I'm straight. I don't know wh where I'm at. And I said, well, let me tell you. <laughs> and I'd say, you know what, Jesus, you're made in the image of God. And he's already designed you perfectly the way he wants you to live life. Wow. But you have to find out how to live that life. I said, how would you like to come and uh, visit our youth group on Wednesday night? Oh, that would be great. So I get on the speaker of the bus and I said, hey, guys, no pressure. We're going to have youth group on Wednesday night, 630 at the Way Community Church in Deschler. You guys are all welcome to come, bring friends. We'd love to have you come out. I think the first night we had like, I don't know, 11 or 12 students show up. And now, fast forward one year now, we're up to about 25 to 30 students weekly that are coming, connecting with our youth group. Not all of them are riding from the bus, mm -hmm. but majority of the ones who are coming have rode that bus and are are inviting friends to come. And now the, you know, wow. we've got 25 to 30 kids and these are kids that are not churched. These are kids that are not growing up in Christian homes. So it's very raw. Yeah. It's very right. raw. Um, and so we walk grace, we walk, walk mercy with them. We, we we're in a season of discipleship because every one of those students have said yes to Jesus. So wow. now we're like, okay, you've said yes to Jesus. Let's walk this out together. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you a tough question. Okay, um, you're you're working, and and this is part of the this is part of the 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 podcast. The challenges of living this faith out in various types of roles, where some roles have more freedom than others. So I'm going to ask a tough question. You're working in a public school environment, and you were able to get on the speaker and invite them to a youth group meeting. Now. Everything I've heard in the news, you're opening yourself up there, it, yeah. and I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uh, putting you down for this. I'm. I'm amazed at the, your boldness hmm. in him to love these kids the way that God has called you to love them. 
but what is the challenge in that of the potential consequences you could face for doing that in the role of a, a public school bus driver? Yeah, that's a great question. I think uh, it comes down to motive of why yeah. I invite. Um, the The thing about it is in our culture, there's this real push of separation from anything Jesus with the rest of life. Right. R relationally, we can talk to kids about, we know the public school systems that we talk to kids about all sorts of stuff that really has, let's just be honest, no business coming from any educators or even the public school setting. I'm not going to um, argue that the yeah. things that are designed specifically for the family, you know, that we're, there's so much of that just getting thrown out the window and there's all sorts of doctrine that's being poured into our students from the age of kindergarten all the yeah. way up through college. Um, you know, we've heard stories of Christians who their children go to college and they come back and their kids are atheists. Yeah. So they're being indoctrinated by culture. Sure. And I think Jesus reveals that so beautifully that he didn't come to be a part of the culture. He came to reveal the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. And and with that, he it came with persecution and it came with troubles. And I think so many times as believers, when we think of persecution and troubles in, in, in the Western church, in the Western world, we, I don't think I want to, I'm not going to look for trouble, right? but I have to embrace it. If I'm going to stand up for Jesus, I have to just know that that's part of the package. That's part of the package deal. He said, you know what? He said, they hate me. So guess what, mm -hmm. Justin, there's going to be people that hate you. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. So, so again, it goes back to what we talked about earlier. I want to in introduce them to my friend. Yeah. The world's introducing them to all sorts of demonic self. You, you, you can make it on your own in this world. There is no God. Mm -hmm. And all of these students are struggling with identity because they're being schooled. They're being taught from the wrong perspective. And so, as believers, we are kingdom carriers. So wherever we go, we're going to be that light. And we, we, yeah. we must love and speak boldly in love. But you do that in those settings, not just because you're in those settings. You do those in those settings as if you were walking down the street. Because yeah. a lot of times people, when a lot of times people will start fighting for the name of Jesus in the public place when they haven't surrendered to him in the private, in the private. Whoa. Whoa. And what will wow. happen, what will happen, Craig, when, when persecution comes, guess who's going to be the first one pulling tail and, and taking off because there's no surrender in, because it becomes, it becomes about I'm right. And I want to fight for this right to say as an American, what I need to say. Hmm. And if we go with that approach, we're going to miss the heart of God we have to go with the approach of we're going to minister to people because our father has ministered to us. Yeah. That's it. It's the simplicity of the gospel is I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. And I'm going to share that with every human being that I can come in contact with that if they, if they don't want to hear about Jesus, Hey, I'm not going to sit there and try to pour him down your throat. Right. I'm not right. here to beat Jesus into you. I'm here to reveal him to you. Yeah. And and I don't do that perfectly every time, yeah. but that's what I'm pursuing. And I think that's where a lot of believers, we have to get into our mind that we, we haven't arrived, but we're pursuing him in our workplaces to reveal him to every person that we come in contact with. So I think one of the biggest things in that is, thankfully, in our school district, um, I'll, I'll tell you this one, too, which I haven't shared with you yet. They actually, I got approached by one of the guys who works in our school district and said, hey, um, would you come pray and speak to our fifth and sixth grade football team? I said, Justin, yeah, that, that would be great. So awesome. And now we have another for our high schoolers. We have another chaplain. He's in our community. He's one of the pastors here in our community. He's one of the chaplains for our, our high schoolers. So he comes and prays with them and ministers to them before every game. But our community and our and our school district has been very welcoming of that. Mm. But the school's not presenting that. It's the families inside of the schools 
it's it's those around saying, hey, I want you to share this. So uh, I started going. I went one time and I thought, well, that was great. Got to pray with these kids. Pretty soon he comes up to me, says, will you come in next week? I said, <laughs> well, yeah, I could come next week. So then pretty soon some of the students are coming on the bus saying, hey, I really like it when you pray for us. Oh. Then they start coming up here to youth group. And what's happening? They're coming not because they understand the gospel, but the gospel's being revealed through simple saying, listen, I'm not here to do anything but introduce you to my friend. Hmm. That's my life purpose. Justin, I did not expect this to go the way it has tonight. Um, we're, we're recording this in the, in the evening right now, and I'm I'm loving this. Me too, man. Th this this has taken the direction of boldness and persecution, um, born out of love for people, mm -hmm. um, and, and the fact that and that's that. Yeah, like I said, that's something we've not talked about in previous episodes. Is the persecution part of this because there are job situations where it is not friendly to a Christian worldview. Mm -hmm. um, and you're not doing it out of rebellion. You're doing it out of a love for these students um, and, and a love for people that you are serving, uh, you know, like, like Paul, it, it's, it's the love of Christ that compels us. Mm -hmm. and, and I forget what that, where that verse is. Um, but, oh man, I, I love, I love this. Okay. I one of the things I, I was just thinking of sharing with you too was, I remember with the whole situation with Paul, a lot of the family, or not the family, but a lot of people within the sector of serving Paul were upset because his counselor wasn't wanting to pursue moving forward with him in this, this opportunity. And mm -hmm. I remember the Holy Spirit speaking this to me very clearly. He said, are you here to prove the counselor wrong or mm. prove me right? Hmm. And I said, I couldn't speak against the counselor. I didn't speak against him. I just yeah. said, you know what? He's doing what he thinks is best. Yeah. That's just, that's just pursue this opportunity and do what we can for Paul. Yeah. And I think that's another thing is we get caught up sometimes in, well, they're wrong. Yeah. They're so wrong. Well, that's okay. Are you here to prove them wrong? Hmm. Or are you here to be a laid down lover to prove that God is right? Yeah. Not that I'm right, but that he's right. Yeah. And and so that and then that goes back to that person's first. Hey, I love you in front of me, and I value you. Not because your counselor says no. I I love you because you're made in the image of God. Right. And that's awesome. a whole yeah, that's a whole different perspective a lot of times than what we take into our workplaces. I mean, let's just be honest. I think a lot of times in our workforce and our work environment, we go to collect a paycheck. Yeah. Yep, right? that's fair. Which is which is fair. We're supposed to collect a paycheck. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh I, I was thinking about this today, even uh just reflecting upon this conversation tonight a little bit. And I, I I thought about this. If we if we go to our workplaces and we see that as the people there as part of our problem, mm -hmm. we'll never reveal Jesus to them. Yeah. But if we see our workplace as an opportunity as a as that God has given us the ability to work uh if we see that work is a blessing mm -hmm. that we get to walk in versus oh it's monday and i got to go to work yeah oh i'm not looking forward to what i got to face today see the two different perspectives one right. perspective is about my comfortability and how frustrated i'm going to be with people today when you, when you get up simply to say, it's not about me, it's all about Jesus, then you wake up going, you know what, today's going to be a good day, whether mm -hmm. everybody follows along with what I want to do, with, if they all hate me, if they're mad at me, if they tell me I did this wrong, that wrong, if I did everything, all I want to do today is serve Jesus in, in, to the very best of my ability. It just changes your whole approach to the day. Yeah, it really does. It really does. Your your view on work. It, it, I'm I'm reading a book right now by uh, by Timothy Keller. Um, here, let me put this called Every Good Endeavor, and um, talks a, yeah talks a lot about our a godly view of work, um, and that it, it's not meant to be a drudgery and 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 everything. God, th there's value in work. He created. He calls us to create. 
but that's Amen. that's that's another subject for for another episode. I, I, I want to wrap things up by by exploring the last role that that you're serving in right now is as lead pastor of, of the Way Community Church out in Deschler, um, because a, a lot of what this podcast is about is the, is the fact that that those of us working out in the marketplace in the everyday jobs we are called biblically to be ministers in Ephesians chapter four. Uh, verses 11 through 13. That's what I close every every episode with. Because we have this um, clergy and laity view of the church that the, the clergy, the professional ministers are the ones doing the ministry. And the rest of us are just feeding off of that that spiritual investment that we're getting from our pastors and our teachers and and, and, and that fivefold ministry uh, mentioned there. But that's not a biblical understanding. So I want to switch gears now from your your experience out in the workplace of living Jesus out now to the role of pastor, which is defined in Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, and what your role is as a pastor to those that are working every day out in the marketplace. So in, in say three or four minutes, can can you kind of give your perspective now as pastor uh, on this? Yeah, I think um, looking at this, uh, I think everything in life as believers is we're believers as, and sons and daughters first. So we're called to do the work of the ministry in life. Um, I think the thing for me is, Ministry, and I, I look back after we've talked about all these different uh, thoughts over all these years. You know, I'm 40 years old now, and I look back over my life, and and I go, man, I I don't regret any time that I spent working in what I worked in, doing what I did, because all of that was a f- it really. I was I was in ministry there just as much as I am here. There isn't, there isn't a dividing line. I know there's, you know, we have pastors, we have teachers, apostles, prophets, evangelists. They're in the the body of Christ. It's the, it's the ministry leadership, elders, all that kind of stuff. But in all actuality, if you don't, if you're not faithful where you're at, how, how can you be faithful with where you're going? Mm. And so a lot of times there's people who who are called into ministry that will never find that destiny of ministry because where they're at, they're unfaithful in it, and they'll mm-hmm. never see where God wants to take them to. So it's always about, even in church settings sometimes, uh, what is I'm, a lot of times people go to church, they go, man, I hope it's a good message today. <laughs> or, man, I didn't get anything out of that message. You know, what if... What if the believer began to see church attendance not as a place to go and receive, but a place to go and give? Wow. You're it's stepping not on about to- us, Craig. You're stepping on toes here, Justin. Yeah, it's not about us. Yeah. It's not. And and how many times I think that's why there's so many people in church, even now, that I would I would I I, I would not challenge their salvation, mm-hmm. but what I would challenge is why they're saved Hmm. because there's so many that come into churches today. And I think something for me that I've learned just in all of this time is I'll hear people say, man, it's just tough out there. And I think Hmm. I go back to my woodland days and I go until you're completely paralyzed (laughs) from the neck down and all you can do to blink is blink your eyes. And somebody has to move you from point A to point B. Your day's looking pretty good. (laughs) Oh, I'm yeah. being persecuted. They're being mean to me. Until your flesh is completely ripped off your body like Paul and Silas's was, until you are no longer even recognizable as a man as Jesus was, mm-hmm. your persecution is but for a moment, and it's pretty light. Yeah. So I, I say that because I think those – I look through all of these different jobs God has has brought through my path, but the, the underlying – tone of all of that is if Jesus isn't the center of that, then I'm my workplace becomes my God instead of him. Wow. Good word. And so that really in a summation of everything that I think God has walked me through. And you know what? 
I'm still learning, man. I'm still learning. And you know <laughs> yeah. what? There's a lot of times the Lord takes me to the woodshed and corrects me because he's a good daddy and he, and that he loves those that he corrects. And uh, yeah. so I'm, I'm still in that place and which I know I'll be there for until he comes back and purify <laughs> and makes completely new all of, of who I am. Uh, but I think the thing about it is, is am I pursuing Jesus today? Like it was the first day that I've met him. Hmm. And am I allowing things to take my attention away from my love for him? And if I am, that's where as us as believers, we have to take that time of reflection and say, God, I want to pull down that coworker off the place of my heart that they've become my God. My actions, my attitude, my character is based upon how they respond during the day instead of what you've done for me during the day. And I just want to thank you for the cross and your faithfulness and who you are to me. And I want to put you on the throne of my heart rather than every time somebody isn't happy with me, uh, mm-hmm. I, I just I can't function the rest of the day because they're being mean. Or have you heard people say, oh, man, the language is so bad in there. I can't work around people that have bad language. I'm that's like, just, that's exactly yeah. where you're called to. Right. But if the bad language begins to affect you, then you're allowing that person to be your influencer instead of grabbing a hold of the gospel as your influence. So those are things that we have to wrestle with and and really go after the things of the Holy Spirit with love for others first. Right. Our guest is Justin Duell. He's the lead pastor at the Way Community Church out in Deschler, Ohio. He's worked in uh, serving those with developmental disabilities. He's worked in screen printing and in embroidery. He's worked as a bus driver, still driving bus and connecting with, with students. Um, Justin, thank you for taking the time with us and just sharing your experience of being a, a Jesus follower in each of those different types of jobs and, and careers. I, I'd like to always ask our guest at, at the end of the, uh, at the end of an episode, speak to the the person that uh, is working in the industry that, that you've represented. So I'm going to let you pick whether it's a bus driver or, you know, screen printing retail or somebody working and serving those with, uh, with, with disabilities speak directly heart to heart to them. Um, just a word of encouragement that, that God puts on your heart, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Um, first, I just want to say thank you for having me on, Craig. It's been an honor just to walk this out with you, uh, having this conversation. Um, but I just want to tell whoever is watching right now, um, you you are valued and you are loved. If you don't know you're valued and you're loved, then uh, you're going to walk through life um searching for fulfillment in your job, searching for fulfillment within your family. When your only fulfillment, your only purpose is found in Jesus. So I just want to encourage you today that I'll surrender completely to Jesus today. Surrender your heart, surrender your actions, surrender your will to him. Completely just trust him. And, And as you do that, as you walk with him, you'll discover that no matter what field of work, whether you're a bus driver, whether you're in caregiving, whether you're in real estate, whether whatever, whatever field you're in, at the end of the day, Jesus loves you and he's equipped you to love others. And don't give up. When people are having a bad day, you just smile harder. You just love harder. When people are being mean to you, you just go after him harder. And you do something good on their behalf. And you say, Justin, that's easier said than done. Well, that's the point of the gospel. <laughs> the gospel isn't just about what we can say we believe, but it's actually believing it and walking it out with conviction to say, God, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And guess what? You are equipped. You are loved and you are valued. The greatest weapon of the believer is that you believe. Do you believe you're loved? Because you can't convince other people that Jesus loves them if you don't believe he does love you. So you have to know he loves you first so that you can love others first. And uh, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength first. And the second is equal to that. Love your neighbor as yourself. There's a scripture that says, how can we love God that we cannot see and say, that we don't love those that we can. 
So if you're frustrated with your coworker, if you're frustrated with somebody that you're your boss, um, the, and you say, I just love Jesus, but you have unforgiveness or bitterness towards them, I would challenge you today to forgive them. I would challenge you today to not look at them as being your joy maker. I want to encourage you today to look to Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. Justin, thank you so much. Um, just, man, powerful, powerful discussion. And I really appreciate you making the time to to invest in us and, and share all of it all that you did this uh, during this episode. So thank you. Thank you, Craig. I really appreciate it, ma'am. I just love yep. being able to sit down. I may not have answered everything perfectly, but I, I, I my prayer is that um, you just hear my heart in this, you know, and, yeah. and sometimes uh, For sure. I, I, I just want, I just want to make sure that I'm communicating uh, out of a place that I have not arrived by no means, but man, I just thank you for, bringing me on and just inviting me into this time with you. So I appreciate it, brother. Hey, as iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another and one woman sharpens another. So, all right. Well, Hey, those of you uh, listening, watching, uh, thank you for joining, uh, joining us again this week. And um, if you have a, again, if you have a question for the podcast, if uh, Justin, if somebody has a question for you or wants to find out more about the way community church, how, how can they get a hold of you? Sure. You can email me at uh, justin at the way um, And you can also download our app, the way community church It's going to have this green W on it. That's on my shirt and you can download that. And there's information on there that you can also stream all of our services and you can get connected to us uh, through the app. And, um, but uh, uh, also we post on Facebook. You can begin to follow us on there as well. But uh, the, if you want to communicate with me directly, uh, the best way would be to email me at justin at the way com. Perfect. We'll make sure we have that in the, in the uh, episode notes for this as well. So there you go. Um, again, don't, uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Um, you can get notified when you subscribe of, of new episodes. If something really touched you uh, during this episode or, or God just put something on your heart or you have a reaction of some sort, if you're watching on YouTube, please leave a comment. We, we would love to hear from you. Um, and uh, again, if, if you're listening to the podcast, you want to ask a question, you can email the podcast at the work week walk at gmail.com. So as I said, we always close out every episode uh, with this passage from Ephesians chapter four, verses 11 through 13. that says this. Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son that we will will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. You have been called. If you follow Jesus, you have a calling on your life to minister no matter what job that you're serving in. So be encouraged this week. Uh, Just know that we're praying for you just for an uh, an awesome encounter with Jesus every day of your work week this week, and that you're able to uh, just pour that love of Jesus into somebody else's life that you're working with or working for, uh, a customer, colleague, boss, whoever it is. Have a great week. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next week. Thank you for joining us for the Work Week Walk podcast living out your faith authentically in the everyday workplace. We're praying you have a great week at work, living out your faith in Jesus in an authentic way that transforms the atmosphere around you.